Hey guys, good morning, it's Mike Chen. Today I'm in Vancouver, Canada, and this is gonna be a spectacular food day. It's cold and rainy outside, so it's a perfect day for some Japanese ramen. First place I'm going to serves up something really special, a bowl of roast beef ramen. Then I'm going to a ramen place I've been wanting to go for a long, long time. Hopefully I'll be able to get in because this place always a lot. And then for dinner, all you can eat Cantonese style lobster and crab. I've never seen anything like this before. Before heading out, a little breakfast from the sponsor of of this video, Sakurako and Tokyo Treat. So the Sakurako box, it's a Japanese subscription snack box. It comes with 20 traditional, authentic, artisanal Japanese snacks where all the snacks are sourced locally in Japan and delivered to your door anywhere in the world. Some of which have been making snacks for over a hundred years. And this month's theme is Holiday in Hokkaido. And every single month you'll get Japanese teas, you'll get a tableware item. Ooh, squid sundae, shaped like a squid. It's basically a tri squid rice cracker. Delicious. A bum kuchin cake. That will go really good with the Gemini tea. And the tableware item for this month, a little dish, Tokyo Treat. And this month's theme is Snacktacular Christmas. And the Tokyo Treat box features more popular snacks. You'll get up to 20 of the most exclusive seasonal limited edition that are only available in Japan for a limited time. And as soon as you open the box, you'll get a booklet detailing all the snacks. Also little fun tidbits of information about Japan. Love reading this. Little corn snacks. Ooh. These are amazing truffle chips. Try this when I was in Japan. Mm. So good. Corentos, basically little crispy fried doughs. Sesame flavor, awesome. There's also chocolates, strawberry gummy. I look forward to the boxes every single month when they show up at my door. You just get so excited. And I love the mission of this company, which is to promote traditional Japanese culture through the medium of snacking, which is just such a great way to do it. I mean, you're eating delicious snacks, you're reading the fun little information they have in the booklets. It's such a great experience, especially when you can't get to Japan. This is the taste of Japan. And if you wanna get these Christmas boxes, you have until the 15th of this month to do so. So if you wanna grab one for yourself or gift a box, someone you care about, just go to my link down below. Use my promo code DUMPLING. You'll get $5 off your first Sakura call or your first Tokyo Treat box. If you love food, if you love snacks, if you love Japanese culture, if you want to get to know more about Japanese culture, you'll love this. All right, I'm going to eat a little more for breakfast and then get our food day started. This can be another amazing food day and it all starts right here where I'm trying out my first roast beef ramen. This is really, really interesting. There's a lot of specialty ramen on the menu. The cream truffle surf and turf spicy miso. So this is a relatively new ramen place here in Vancouver and they serve up a bowl of beautiful roast beef rose mazmen. Some crispy garlic chips, scallions, and a ton of roast beef on top. So roast beef is marinated for 24 hours, then it's slowly cooked and sliced to order. This is a tender looking roast beef. Mazmen, of course, dry noodles. And this one has a shoyu base. Whenever it's a cold day, a pipe and hot bowl of ramen is always just so exciting. And the ramen itself, wavy noodles, each strand easily grabs onto the sauce. There is a ton of umami in the spoiled noodles. But the first thing you notice right away is how amazingly chewy the noodle texture is. I mean, this thing is just scrumptious, covered in some oil, some soy sauce. Mm. The whole thing just emits an enticing aroma that grows stronger as you chew. I think this thing will definitely be helped with some vinegar. And also I love this. All the garlic chips you want. If this isn't garlicky enough for you, just add some more. I love garlic chips. This bowl of noodles is so good and I haven't even got to the roast beef yet. Mm. 
Even better with some vinegar and the extra garlic chips, highly recommend. Crispy and garlicky adds additional layer of flavor and texture to this bowl of ramen. Let's try the roast beef. Mm. That is a juicy slice of roast beef with a beautiful, subtle hint of smokiness to it. And they say they marinated this for 24 hours. There's definitely a lot of flavor in the roast beef. Also, very peppery. I like it. That goes very, very well with the bowl of noodles. Also, wanna add some heat? Hot oil. It's just gonna add a little bit. I love the pepperiness of the beef. It's gonna go ahead and add some more pepper in here. Oh yeah, a little extra heat, even more perfect. This is just a very well-rounded bowl of noodles. Noodle texture, 10 out of 10. Flavor, nothing's overwhelming, just really good solid flavors and ingredients. I think the added crushed pepper goes really well with the roast beef that's already really peppery. I haven't had a bowl of ramen for about a month, which I think is a record for me. So this has just been tremendously satisfying. After dish, I'm gonna try their most popular ramen bowl, the shoyu ramen. So I left a little bit while the beef soup finished cooking and this thing, Oh my God, this smells so good. Such an intense, beefy fragrance. And also you smell the earthiness of the truffle that they added on here. Usually this bowl of ramen comes with uni as well, but they were out of uni today. And this beef broth is simmered for over six hours with giant beef bones, vegetables. And of course, their famous thinly sliced tender roast beef on top. This looks and smells absolutely incredible. Well, this is a really, really beefy broth. Really fatty as well. And that richness is even further enhanced with the added truffle in here. The same wavy, thick noodles. Oh my goodness, this is a really intensely beefy broth. I like it. It's rustic. I think the added truffle gives us another layer of intense flavor. Add a little vinegar just to cut the richness a little bit. Mm. Add some chili oil. Mm. Same chewy, deliciously al dente noodles. And this thing has soaked up all that great beefy broth. Mm. And the different oils they added in here completely boosts that delicious fragrant flavor from the broth. I haven't had a lot of bowls of beef ramen before. And it really is an entirely different type of richness than with pork broth. And if you love all things beef, you'll definitely enjoy this. Couple slurps, your body warms right up, especially with the added tender slices of roast beef. Mm. And that truffle is really a perfect ingredient here. Also, this thing, just like the first bowl, explosion of umami. The show you provides that rich, deep flavor foundation that just makes you want to keep slurping. I think noodle texture wise, I like the Mosman better. But if you're looking for a slurp worthy bowl of delicious broth with your noodles, this is it. Also, this place every day lunch and dinner time, lying out the door. All right, I'm going to finish this up, and there's another ramen place I really want to try right down the street. So this is one of the most popular ramen spots in Vancouver. There's a line pretty much at all the hours of the day. Right now it's about 1 p.m. I've been waiting for about 40 minutes. So when you're in line, bring over a little sheet. You can choose which ramen you want, the thickness of the noodles, the richness of the broth, the amount of heat. I like the seating here. When you're sitting by yourself, they got a little ramen booth for you to give you some privacy while you slurp. Everything looks phenomenal. Beautiful six thin slices of pork chashu, chilies on top, and also mixed into the tonkatsu broth. Scallions throughout is just beautiful. This broth is so crazy good. I asked for a really rich broth, so that's what I like. Yeah, I could definitely afford a house here in Vancouver. Spicy, thick, gelatinous super thin cuts up pork. Wow, did that thing just fall apart when I tried? Oh my gosh, you can't even pick this thing up. It's so delicate. I feel like I need one of those fragile stickers for this chashu. 
melt in your mouth. How fatty, delicious pieces of char siu. Chase it with some of that broth. Mm. You taste that awesome porky flavor. This is basically like a bowl of mommy bomb. Noodles, typical Fukuoka fashion, straight and thin. I asked for some firm noodles. These are definitely it. They soak up that rich porky broth very well. Again, the chilies doesn't take away from that deep umami flavor. It reminds me a lot of Ichiran ramen. Mm. These are some absolutely slurp-worthy noodles. Everything from the awesome crunch of the scallions to the chewy noodles to that melts in your mouth pork char siu. Mm. The char siu got some nice smoky flavor to it as well. This is one of the most bomb-tastic boiled tonkatsu ramen you can find anywhere outside of Japan. This is for sure one of the best bowls of tonkatsu ramen here in Vancouver, if not the best. I like mine. A lot of flavor, a lot of richness, a lot of spice. Does 100% hits the spot. Also, my combo came with three gyoza and a little butadon, pork over rice. Mmm. Gyoza, very thin skin and really juicy pork filling. I think it's almost like a soup dumpling. Amazing porky flavor as well. The pork and the butadon is good. I wish there was more juice from the pork to eat the rice with. So I'm just gonna add some soy sauce. Not as good as the gyoza, not bad. I waited about an hour to get in. It was freezing outside. Now I'm burning up. Definitely worth the wait. Come check this place out. Dinner and this is an amazing deal. I'm going to the Grand Neptune Seafood Restaurant where you can get unlimited servings of their lobster and crab dishes. Let's go check it out. This might be the most incredible all you can eat to lobster crab deal anywhere. Have you ever been to a Chinese seafood restaurant? They usually offer such a wide array of dishes. So you have two options. You can get all you can eat crab for 88 Canadian dollars, which is about 64 US, which includes so many different types of crab, like crab noodles, ginger scallion crab noodles. Usually any one of these dishes will be about 30, $40. Then you can have soup. You can and have appetizers like chicken feet or pig feet. Two of the best tasting feet out there. Or you can get crab and lobster for additional 10 Canadian dollars. 98 Canadian dollars, about $72 US. You get all the crab dishes and you get ginger scallion lobster noodles. If you never had ginger scallion lobster, you gotta try it. Butter ain't got nothing on this. Let's do the crab and lobster. Let's get a lot of stuff. This is one of the most incredible spreads I have ever seen. This is the kind of stuff that I will see at Chinese wedding banquets. Let me show you what I got. Spicy crab, stir fried cauliflower, lobster and rice cake, scallion garlic crab, salted egg fish skin, stir fried burma chili noodles, lobster and cream sauce over noodles, duck breast, chicken feet, there's pig's feet, mango pomelo sago. Pretty much the entire menu is represented on this table. And what's most incredible about this, and again, I can't believe an all-you-can-eat deal like this exists. Everything is fresh. This Atlantic lobster flown in. The crab is fresh. Everything you see here, fresh as can be. Honestly, don't even know where to start. Sometimes I, I, I sit in front of a feast and I, I honestly do feel overwhelmed. Let's just do a little appetizer. One of my favorite things, garlic cucumber salad. Mm garlicky, refreshing cucumbers to kind of wet your appetite a little bit. Pickled chicken feet. I would buy pounds of this stuff. You can get this in Chinatown or some local Chinese restaurants. Mm. 
Those are so good. Spicy, garlicky, pickled chicken feet. The ultimate keto snack. This looks like smoked duck breast with that beautiful layer of fat and the skin intact. A little bit of seaweed salad on the side. Put it on top of the duck breast. Mmm. Oh, that's so beautiful. Fat instantaneously renders on your tongue really nice flavor in the skin and that meat. It's just infused with smoke. You don't see that dish a lot in Cantonese seafood restaurants. That's delicious. And here we go. Lobster and cream over noodles. So what they do here is they fry the lobster first and then it goes into the wok. Gorgeous piece of lobster covered in cream sauce. Mm. Oh, that's so good. That's some creamy, extremely buttery lobster. The cream sauce is a little sweet, very creamy, and the sweetness of the sauce does not at all cover up the natural sweetness of the lobster itself. Again, this is fresh as you can find lobster. And it's just so naturally sweet. Neil's got a nice texture too. After a bite of the creamy lobster, definitely need a pickle radish to cut through the richness. Singapore fried vermicelli. This is such a classic dish. It's something I love to order whenever I'm at a Cantonese seafood restaurant. This thing, it's just so fragrant. A lot of really nice, delicious curry flavor cooked into every strand of noodles with a nice crunch from the pepper and delicious pop from the shrimp. This is a dish I always love to see. Fried fish skin covered in salted egg sauce. Oh my God. That's so crispy and nice. I love lobster and crab. I love Singapore fried vermicelli. I love chicken feet, but this, there's just something special about this. Salted egg, one of my favorite ingredients. Grew up eating that stuff. Sometimes I would just have salted egg and a bowl of rice. That's enough for me. And if you never had a crispy fish skin chip with salted eggs before, you need to try it. They cook this masterfully. As crunchy as can be. Deep, rich, salted, eggy flavor. This is so perfect. Again, keto friendly. Mm. That dish, 10 out of 10. This next crab is one of my favorites of all time, scallion and ginger. I don't care if you scallion ginger lobster, scallion ginger crab. You can scallion ginger broccoli, I'd probably eat it. This is a classic lobster or crab dish and it's served over noodles. And the best thing about restaurants like this, all that delicious innards of the crab, the most tasty part of the crab, it's fried up. So you just grab it and eat it with your noodles. Mm. That's just like the pinnacle of seafood noodles. Pure seafood crab umami essence with the delicious thin, chewy noodles. And the crab leg, just munch right into that. Mm. Ultra sweet, succulent, tender crab meat in that delicious ginger and scallion sauce. Mm. If you guys never had this before, come here and give this a try. The crab itself, sweet and tender. The ginger adds a bit of warmth, slightly spicy, pungent kick, which really complements the sweetness of the crab. And that's why these two ingredients go so well together. And the scallions brings a slight sweetness, onion-like taste to the dish with a hint of freshness. So all combined together, it creates a dish that's aromatic with the scallion and ginger really highlighting the sweetness of the crab. One of my favorite ways to eat lobster or crab. Rice cake, lobster, some scallions, rice cake on top. Mm. All right, rice cake is nice. Also, I forgot to mention, all these dishes, you get that beautiful wok head. And that's the thing about Chinese dishes. In Chinese cooking, the prep takes much longer than the actual cooking process itself. So all the ingredients are prepped and in the wok, most of these dishes will be done in under 30 seconds because the fire is so hot. All these ingredients are cooked together and the dish is finished so quickly. And that's why you get that beautiful wok head flavor, all these dishes. There's the head for those of you interested in the lobster brain, which might look a little scary. Mm. Pure umami. That's awesome. Mm. 
that wok hit hits me even before the sweetness of the lobster. I again get that sweet oniony flavor from the spring onions. And again, all these ingredients just work to enhance the natural sweetness of the lobster, which it 100% does. Garlic cauliflower. Mm. Refreshing and nice. That's actually pretty darn good. This is a really refreshing dish. That kind of acts as a palate cleanser. I really like this. I mean, I'm complimenting a veggie dish amongst all this meat and seafood. So yeah, it's really good. I've been waiting to try this. This is the spicy Dungeness crab again. That delicious fried innards. And look at this. A ton of chili stir fried with this Dungeness crab. Mm. Whenever I bite into a new lobster or crab dish, it always shocks me by how sweet it is. And this one, the sweetness hits you first, and then that nice simmering slow heat from the chilies that at no time ever overwhelms the sweetness of the crab. That might be my favorite. Sweet, spicy, garlicky with a slow burn. Yeah, this is amazing. Oh, I'm so excited for this. Pig's feet. I know this might scare some people, but if you try this and get hooked on it, trust me, You'll be hooked for life. What I love about the pig's feet, there's so many different textures here. You got that gelatinous skin from the pig. There's collagen, there's tendon, there's meat, there's fat. It just got such a great mouthfeel. It's covered in this soy sauce based sauce with chilies and garlic and onions. Give me a plate of pig's feet, a ginky soda, and an episode of Supernatural. I call that an awesome Sunday afternoon. Totally forgot about the hot and sour soup, and I never seen this before. Inside the hot and sour soup, there's shrimp and there's scallops. Mmm. This is some next level hot and sour soup. I've had a lot of different versions of hot and sour soup before. Never seen seafood inside. This is freaking ridiculous. Mm. Spicy, rich, thick, with sweet bursts of seafood. This has been an incredible seafood feast. And all these dishes, not only do they taste amazing, they're so nostalgic for me. There's a couple of dessert items left. One is the mango gelatin. So the mango gelatin has little pieces of lychee inside. So not only has this got a beautiful burst of mango flavor, you also get little pieces of sweet lychee. Hmm. And then a classic dessert, mango sago. Mm. Sweet, creamy, really, really refreshing. It's hard to believe how much value you get from this all-you-can-eat feast. Like I said, this is going to be something that happens periodically for them. They're still trying to figure out whether they're going to do it weekly or monthly. So definitely follow them on social media for the announcements. Like I said, you walk into any Cantonese seafood restaurant, you order a plate of scallion ginger lobster, that's going to be at least $40. This is definitely one of the most value for money. All-you-can-eat deals anywhere on the planet. And again, it's fresh lobster and fresh crab that's shipped here. They get a shipment every couple of days. And it's a Michelin restaurant, which doesn't surprise me one bit. Also, staff here, incredibly nice. This is a can't miss type of feast. Highly, highly, highly recommend. And that wraps up another amazing food day here in Vancouver. Again, all the places I went to listed down below for you guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Until we eat again, see you later.